A good job there. <laughs> now that the ball is rolling, how about stretching that rail to the west coast? Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to the third episode of a nostalgia playthrough of Railroad Tycoon 2 Platinum Edition. Now, I'm going to explain you a little bit more of this. We're going to select this before the old man starts talking again and just get to it. And we'll get into it and I'll explain things there. If you thought it was tough back east, wait till you try to connect to the west. You'll need to use every resource available to reach your goal. Man, metal, and money will only get you so far. You'll need the determination of the original Iron Men to make this dream a reality. Wake up! I'm talking to you. I don't know about you whippersnappers these days. <laughs> now, if by some miracle you do make it, there'll be a celebration around the nation the likes we've never seen. Well, let's try to make that uh, celebration happen. We're going to read through, these, uh, through the scenario statement or mission briefing here, whatever you want to call it. In the interest of opening up the West and building unity amongst the states, the US government is subsidizing Westworld's expansion by the railroads. The large land grants and subsidies have begun to flow. To win, fulfill the connection choice you made on the campaign screen, connecting Sacramento to St. Louis, St. Paul to Seattle, or New Orleans to Los Angeles by the end of 1882, and hold, haul six loads between those two selected cities. For silver win, complete this task by 1882 and have a company equity of 10 million or more. For a gold win, do it all by 1878, so 16 years from now, and have a personal net wealth of at least 8 million at the end of it all. Now, this means that we're going to have to play around with the stock market. And the stock market... Uh, it can be a bit of a fickle whore. Uh, I will tell you right now that uh, this is not the first time I'm recording this episode. This is my second attempt because as I've done so many times before when playing the stock market, it's, uh, uh, you know, I've been doing a little, little bit YOLO. The die, live fast, die young mentality. And I buy too many stocks. The value drops and I have to say, like, I'm close to winning. I was almost winning on my last attempt of recording this, but then a uh, recession hit, and uh, I had to sell off all my stocks. I just could not fix the problem, and uh, right before the finishing line, I lost. With no chance of getting the gold, so... Uh, yeah, you gotta be a little bit careful with how you play the stock market. I'm by no means an expert of it, but I've certainly tried and failed many times and have some experience in that regard. And also, I've succeeded many times. Now, there's three routes there that you can connect from east to west. You can go on the middle route, the northern route, or the southern route. We have selected the southern route, which is from New Orleans, over here, across the country this way here, over to Los Angeles. This might be the easiest uh, route, track connection-wise. Uh, well, it might also be a little bit more expensive than other routes, because there is a few more rivers here that you might have to deal with. You don't necessarily, you can build from New Orleans around here and out this way, and kind of circumvent these uh, various rivers. That's going to be a little bit ineffective, though, when it comes to time trains take to reach the destination. It's going to be cheaper to build the tracks, though, doing it that way. The middle route... It's from St. Louis to, uh, I think it was Sacramento or San Francisco, one of these two cities, sir. Uh, this is probably the toughest one track lane wise because as you can see on the middle route here you have these massive mountains in your way and a lot of more tricky terrain. It can be done, you just need to be a little bit creative. And also there's, uh, well, there's various types of um, industry, so yeah like farms and such so uh, depending on where you start you will have a little bit of a different um, different type of industries that might be what you want to go with the northern route there however is what I usually go for it's a fairly straightforward one it's not too shabby uh, what I like to do on the northern route I never really played the middle route but uh, the northern route there you can just kind of build up between Fargo Minneapolis get in some farms etc build up here get a lot of economy going get some income going and then kind of shoot west 
And if you build here, you can build up here, go to uh, from Minneapolis to Fargo, over to Minot, etc. And over in this direction, you can kind of go along this river, which will give you good gradient on the track, making it pretty flat, which is uh, beneficial. And you don't have to deal with bridges unless you uh, unless you want to. And then you can build up this way here, go through here, snake through Snake River, go through Boise, and uh, do a little bit of finickying with laying tracks and kind of deleting them until you get the terrain good here to go through this valley. Then you can go over this way here and end up in Seattle. You can start building wherever you want. You don't have to start in either of the cities uh, that you have selected, although you can start in both of them. Uh, it's generally better to start on the east side of the map, as there's going to be a lot easier profits to be had there. If you look at Los Angeles, for instance, uh, if you start there, then where, where do you build to? What's your, you know, where, where do you go? There's not really any good options. Whereas in New Orleans, there will be some good options. Now. We're going to start a new company, you start it and uh, name it whatever you want this time. We're going to call it YouTube Connect. And with the logo most closely resembling the YouTube logo. You can uh, do this many ways. We're going to go uh, with a little bit of back and forth here. What's good, what's bad? Well, it depends on your intention and your starting location. I'm going to go for player investment and outside investment maxed out. That might be a bit wasteful. And we're going to... What this results in is that there will be more shares on the market. Which you're gonna have to buy back if you wanna get uh, max profit out of your dividend that you pay out to yourself. And to not pay that to anyone else. We'll get more into that as we move along here though. We're just going with the uh, max outside investments which I don't necessarily recommend. And we're gonna do that simply because uh, in New Orleans I want to connect this port. And I also want to connect Baton Rouge in one station. Ports on this map, or in this scenario, gives you food and three passenger. One food, three passenger per year. No demand. So, we're gonna see if we can uh, maybe get a station. So if we place the station on this side of the river, as you can see, we're not gonna be encompassing the port. And that is why we need this much money, because we're gonna start it off on this side of the river instead, the station. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any of the Baton Rouge houses with it, but it's whatever. We're just going to have to do it this way. we got a meatpacking plant. And some textile mills. Uh, converting cotton and wool into goods. And meatpacking is cattle into food. And now we're going to have to build a bridge. We're going to go for a stone bridge, which allows trains, uh, trains to run at full speed over them. They do cost 300000 though, and that is why we are doing such a large outside investment on this one. Well, we want to head over to Beaumont and Houston. And what I like to do is... Um, as you can see, we're already pretty low on cash. And what I like to do is to connect Houston and Beaumont in just kind of one go here. Try to get as many houses as you possibly can in the station radius. We'll see how we do that. Um, I think that's going to do it. So yeah, we have Houston connected. We have uh, New Orleans connected. How much do our trains cost? 46,000, right? So we can shell out on the sanding and water tower on each of these stations, just so we have that. I'm going to hold back on the roundhouses for now, though. And we're just going to get one train going in each direction. We're going to load it up with whatever is available. Unfortunately, that isn't very much at the moment. But uh, hopefully, in time, it will be more. So we're just taking everything and we're just transporting it back and forth between these two large stations here. Now I just quickly want to see what's our options here. We have a lot of farms. We have a lot of cotton farms. We have a lot of cattle. So maybe we want to go for that in some way. But also, maybe we don't. We'll just have to see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mull that over in my head a little bit while, uh, while we just run these things. So. And we'll try to get into the uh, stock market aspect. And I'll try to explain a little bit around that for you real quick. 
Now, as I've stated, I'm no, I, I understand how it works. I just, I'm not an expert at it. So, the way things work is that uh, you have your cash, you have stocks, they add up to your total value, your personal net wealth. And you have purchasing power, which is affected by how many shares you have, how much they are worth, how much cash you have. And currently now we have a purchasing power of 81,000. The stock price for one stock or 1,000 stocks will be, uh, or shares will be $92 which we can't afford. So, what you can do... Let me explain this real quick. So, stocks will go down in value if your company is not making any profit. Recessions, economical booms will affect stock value, affect stock value as well. Uh, so in a recession, it's gonna drop a little bit because it's a recession. People don't have that much money to be spending on stocks and whatnot. And or taking a train and whatever. So it makes sense. Uh, when a train enters a station and delivers its cargo, you make profits, and that will increase your stock price. So, it is best to buy stock prices, or to buy stocks, I mean, my bad, um, just before a train is going to be making substantial profits for you, hit the station, and turn in the cargo. Now, uh, we'll probably be seeing a little bit more of that later when we actually have a little bit of purchasing power. So we're just gonna run these trains and we're gonna try to get a uh, roundabout as soon as possible. Actually, I didn't check our manager. Car maintenance, 10% cheaper. It's not the same as I had last time, actually. Fuel cost, steam cheaper, fuel cost cheaper, engine maintenance higher. Uh, let me just leave... Right, okay, well, uh, the dividend was uh, cut. We'll, we'll get into that as well. I just want to see, what's the uh, maintenance, fuel cost? Well, we'll hire this. Uh, and this could be a good idea, actually. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm clicking all the wrong things, sir. Uh, so we, car maintenance 10% cheaper. That's like whatever. Um, I mean, it could matter, but... Uh, fuel cost being cheaper could be good, and it's a lot more expensive with fuel than it is with uh, maintenance, so we're gonna get this guy. Actually, we can't get this guy. We can't issue bonds either because my credit rating is tanked, so I already made some mistakes in this uh, scenario. Huh? Uh, but whatever, we're just gonna roll with it. We can still uh, still get a gold out of it, I'm pretty sure. We could issue stocks, buy back stocks, and what we want to do is buy back stocks later when we have built up a strong economy. So that the only one holding stocks in my company is me. So that I can funnel all the money from the company into my own pockets to increase my net wealth and get the gold. You don't want to be too fast and furious with the stock market though. I mean, as you buy stocks, the stock prices will go up. Because there's a demand in the market for those stocks. But since no one else is really buying any, and if you're not making any profit to kind of stabilize it, they will go down. Because it's a, an artificial inflation of stock prices due to there being interest in those stocks. And once that artificial uh, inflation is gone, well, uh, you could end up having to sell all your stocks if you uh, drop down in negative purchasing power. And you could have to sell off all your stocks, be broke as shit, and have a massive debt, and just not be able to complete the gold requirement. So when dabbling in stocks, if you don't know what you're doing, which I'm not 100% on myself, be careful, otherwise it could bite you in the ass. Right, we're gonna load up a little bit here in Houston. And uh, I'm gonna micromanage a few trains in the start here. Always... In most scenarios, you should micromanage a little bit in the start until you get things rolling. So we set the speed record, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, we can pick up a little bit here. Two male, three passenger, let's do that. And now we can also get the roundhouses going, so we're just going to get one of these in each one of these large stations. Roundhouses give your trains oil and perform maintenance, so they don't break down as often. We're just gonna run these trains back and forth a little bit more, and then we're gonna expand. 
because expansion is key. You want to expand as fast as you can to Los Angeles without going broke doing so. And at all times you need to keep in mind the end goal, which is if you're going for gold, to be rich as fuck. And you need to make the right steps to to become rich as fuck, basically. And uh, honestly, you don't really need to buy... If you, if you can build up your railroad to be economically viable, you don't really need to dabble too much in the stocks, because if at some point... If you, if you can just get, like, enough of a cash flow coming in, you can buy back all the stocks on the market so that you are the only one uh, still having stocks. I would suggest you buy a little bit of stocks, though, because otherwise it's going to be a lot, because your stock's going to split into two and three and four and whatever, depending on how good you do. And uh, then there's going to be so many stocks on the market to buy back. If you can minimize the amount of stocks that are available to the market, that would be good for you. Alright, it's the sudden route for you. Good money to be made this way, but don't forget your goal. New Orleans and Los Angeles won't wait forever. Cattle will call to your purse strings. Take only what you need. Right, we got YouTube Connect stock, a split two for one. As you can see, we're already uh, splitting stock here. So now there's twice as many stocks out on the market, or shares, that we have to buy back. Doing it my way, with my strategy here. This is not necessarily the only strategy, but it's a safe strategy, I feel. If you can do good with track building, setting up your trains, getting profitable routes going, then you don't have to worry that much about the stock market. Because you can just buy the stocks back. But yeah, the board of directors increased my salary to three, by 3,000 to 13,000. And we could also dabble in these other guys' uh, companies, but we're not going to be doing that just yet, though. Uh, so, I wanted to check my manager here. We're going to get this guy here now with the cheaper fuel costs, because another thing that could be an issue. You're going to be running trains across the country. From New Orleans to Los Angeles. They're going to be stopping nowhere in between. So they're going to be on the railroad for a long amount of time. And if you don't make sufficient profit to... Uh, yeah. To kind of keep... Uh, keep all maintenance costs and such at bay. So it, when, they, when they start hitting the stations, they're going to make you tremendous amounts of money. But it's that time from you send these trains out until then where your economy will suffer from having these trains operating and not making any profit. And also the, the railroad maintenance. Like for instance, if you look at uh, income here, like track maintenance. Uh, last year was, well, yeah, last year track maintenance was 73,000, and we're, we, we're just starting out. It's going to be a lot more. And you got engine maintenance, car maintenance, all this stuff right there. As you can see, car maintenance is not really worth having 10% cheaper, because as you can also see, fuel costs add up to a lot more than car maintenance. So cutting the costs on that, much better. Maintenance is also, who cares if that's a little bit more expensive. Cheaper fuel is the way to go. If you have that uh, that manager available, which it's it's random in this scenario, so it, for you it could be another another guy. Either way, uh, so this train's about to hit Houston and make us about half a million, a little bit less in profit. So we're going to buy a little bit of shares. Let's go for two thousand. So now the price is sixty nine dollars per share. What a magical number, I suppose. There's all these memes about it on the internet. But, uh, yep. So we're gonna see. Once this hits the station now, makes the profit, we're just gonna ship it off here with some, uh, with the correct loadout. And as you can see now, our uh, stock price is 73 per. And as we don't make any profit, I can probably show you that over time, just right before a train hits the station. It's, this, it's the point there where the price will be at its lowest for us. Your manager has uh, suggested establishing a railroad contracting company to help earn a bit more money from your own construction. You'll be able to charge whatever you want and pass along the bill to the government, who is footing most of the bill. Of course, you could get caught, but 
the company would reduce your track construction uh, your track construction costs by 30 percent if you get caught it'll probably just be a silly fine everyone needs to railroad yeah let's do it 30 percent less sure it's probably gonna be worth it even if we get the fine most of the time you don't really get the fine though so uh, sometimes you do i don't recall how much it is but it's not like a substantial amount so Okay, for some reason our share price is still 73. Let's just buy another share. 7,000 and now we just don't buy anymore. I don't want to uh, stretch uh, my luck too much. Because we need to keep bringing in that money now. But as you can see, we have uh, 1.1 million going around right now. So, we can make some decisions there. Do we connect to Dallas Fort Worth, which seemingly has a pretty decent amount of houses. Meaning uh, good passenger profits. We could do that. We could connect to San Antonio, which would kind of keep us more on track with the uh, southern route that we're going for. But also if we go up to Dallas Fort Worth, we have these farms and we have these cattle yards here that we could connect to our network and make some profit with. The question is, is that necessary? And it probably isn't. So, I think actually we're gonna do it. It's gonna, because you want like as direct as direct of a route as possible going between these two cities, so it doesn't take too long for these trains to get to the destination. Once you start sending them between New Orleans and Los Angeles, but I do want to get some profits going, so we're just gonna kind of construct the track through here. For some reason, I couldn't select there. Through here to Dallas, like uh, like so. We'll set up a station here connecting Dallas. Yeah, that should do it. I just want to rename this station to just simply Dallas, just for simplicity reasons. And uh, now, if I look at the grain, we don't necessarily need the grain for anything at the moment. But there will be a point in time where we do, so I'm gonna get a station going. Ah, oh, we're gonna have to go with a large station. <laughs> God damn it. Or we could do like a side track here, I suppose. Uh, but that would create some issues with the track in general and trains being on it and whatnot. So let's not dabble too much in that. We're gonna put in another train to, uh, another train to micromanage. We're running from Dallas to Houston. Wasn't anything actually in Houston right now, but... Uh, there will be soon enough. And we're gonna connect Abilene here. If we can do that with green gradient. Yeah. We can. And we can push through here. And then we can get a uh, large station here. That will at least encompass four of these uh, cattle yards. Uh, now we just need to wait for a little bit more profit. So we're gonna get back to actually running the game at some speed. So this will be making us quarter of a mil when it hits. We can maybe start running some more trains then. New lanes. And there's five passenger and one food. So we'll take all that and transport that over to Houston. And let's see. We can get a train going from Abilene to uh, New Orleans and then back to Dallas. With some cattle. Uh, well, let's say five cattle cars should do. Don't want the train to be too slow. The cattle cars and the food cars are quite heavy, so that's something to take into consideration. Also, we want to get a sanding water and roundhouse up. I might be a little bit, um, a little bit overzealous on roundhouses, so you don't, you just want to make sure that your trains swing by a roundhouse every now and then so they can actually, uh, you know, get some maintenance work done on them. So yeah, it's, it's a long path. We're going to turn the uh, passenger trains on express so the uh, cattle trains do not block them. And one thing that you can do is uh, the meatpacking plant right there, for instance. You can purchase this if you know you're going to be making a lot of profit shuttling cattle to it and food from it to where it is to in demand 
Uh, but it's a long-term investment though, and we are going to be trying to be doing this as quick as possible. So long-term investments, not really necessarily what you want to do in this scenario, but you can, and it is probably going to make uh, up for itself within 10 years if you just use it for what it's good for. But, however, let's not dabble in it. We need the money for getting some trains going, expanding our tracks, etc. So, we got this train about to hit Houston now. Huh? We can load up in quite a bit. We'll just take everything. Well, stock price is fairly decent right now, actually, but... Um, yeah, we'll see. So, annual report. We're in a normal economic status, or economy status. Investors are very pleased. Board of Director increased salary from five uh, by 5,000 to 18,000, and we have a couple other managers available. Uh, we're not doing best in profits just yet, but it's fine. We'll, uh, we'll get there. And even if we don't, you can still win, so... Uh, let's see, track building 15% cheaper, mountainous track building 20% cheaper, station building 10% higher, fuel cost electric 10% cheaper. Uh, the track building, we'll go for this guy actually, so we can lay cheaper tracks. Right, in New Orleans now, we have three passenger, one male, and we'll just throw in a dining for good measure. And then we're going to hope a manager that does something good to steam engines in one way or another will come by at some point. And we are also going to keep flooding the track to some degree with trains going from Abilene to uh, New Orleans. We want to have a little bit of space in between them though, so they don't uh, clog up the tracks. Don't, don't get too many running. I made that mistake a few times there. Uh, you just have too many tra uh, trains doing this route and then the profits get tanked. They just kind of block each other, and it's, it just turns into chaos, so... Manage uh, how many trains you have on the track to a certain degree as well. You can certainly uh, reap the rewards of that in the long run. That being said, we are going to put more than two trains on this route for sure to get some money out of it. We'll send one of them to Houston with food as well. Because, you know, Houston probably wants some food also. Uh, and, as you can see here, there's a number behind these different things, an amount here in the demand section. When you play on hard difficulty, if there is no demand, if there's uh, the number is zero on demand, they will still take the goods. On easier difficulties, you can deliver it, they will just, whatever, they'll take any good, it doesn't matter, they'll just pay less. Uh, but it needs to be in demand when you deliver it, on hard difficulty. Now, say you have seven... Uh, uh, let's say, okay, there's three mail cards, sir, or cars, sir, right? If you have, if you come in with six mail cars, you will get the uh, appropriate amount for the first three that are in demand. You will get full price for them. And the other ones will be worth less. They will still accept them and you will still make profit on them, but less. So don't flood the market in various cities. Try to spread out what you send where so that... Uh, the demand doesn't get kind of messed up a little bit. Okay, so we got this train in Dallas. We're going to load it up with uh, passengers. And we're soon going to start expanding a little bit. Just uh, trying to make a little bit of profit here, getting some trains running. And, uh, and yeah, and such. So, let's see for now with... Uh, three trains, maybe? Or four trains, I guess we have here now. Four is probably not going to be enough to um, take all the cattle that this is producing. Also, we could get a wool train going just because why not? Uh, there's demand for wool in Houston, so we can. There we go. Three wool. Milk. Why not? Also bring the milk to sell. And then turn it, this into goods and take the goods over to Dallas. So it's not going to make a lot of money that train, but it's. You know, it's going to add up. And so we should start thinking about expanding, because this guy, I don't want him to cut over to the south there and block a route with a track that we need to go through, and then his trains will have priority on that track. I'm just trying to find a good gradient. Uh, this seems pretty fine. We'll just go through Odessa like this, I think. Like that, that should be fine. 
And we'll just put a station here, like a small station, it doesn't really matter. I just want a uh, sanding and water tower here, plus, plus a roundhouse, which is a little bit wasteful. And oh yeah, right, now station buildings will be more expensive. So maybe we should build that later. I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm laying double track. You might want to go a single track or whatever, but I'm going to be running trains back and forth. I don't want them to stop each other as they uh, cross the nation. So that's just how I want to do it. You can do it differently. Right, we're going to run one more train from Abilene to New Orleans to Dallas, and hopefully it's not going to be flooding the tracks too much. But I think it will be fine. We can probably get a few more, actually. Alright, so our stock split. Economy status still normal. Investors are excited about my performance. Increased my salary by 4,000. We had the best revenue this year. And we're getting to the top. Um, I'll just buy 15,000 shares. So that if we split again, we have 30,000. And etc. and so on. Right, we're going to get mail... How many passengers? Five passengers. We'll take passengers because they pay more than food. Alright. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep up with the expansion. Now, there's a few places you can cross over here. I would say here looks decent, potentially. So we're gonna try to get a track down there with uh, as good of a gradient as we can. Hmm, that's a pretty steep gradient right there with a tree, so let's see what we can do instead of that. Oh, another train hit the station. Let's load it up with mail and a passenger car. And then... Like so. And then we need to expand further from that, but uh, we'll uh, get to that soon enough. Right. New Orleans, is it loading up on anything? It's got one passenger. Can take the food as well, I guess. Right, let's turn the speed up a little bit though. And Abilene kind of keeps crapping out. Uh, I don't know, uh, I don't understand. I'm doing something wrong here, like. It should be selecting... Have I not been clicking in on these cars? Because if you click in on a train, and then you go to buy a new train, it should copy the last one you have selected. And it does now, but I just did something wrong. Uh, we'll just save that train for later. Until we uh, find some use for it. Okay. The cattle trains are coming in, making some money. Yeah, they're making good profit when they get to their destination. We just don't want to flood with too many. Economy forecast growing prosperity, that's good. Now about to hit Dallas with this train here, so let's we'll see. Take everything Dallas has to offer. Okay, so our opponent here built tracks across our tracks to connect to San Antonio, but since we place the tracks first turn, now our trains will have priority here. So if his trains are crossing, they will have to stop if one of our trains come running through them. And I didn't want that to be going on the other way. So that's why we did this the way that we did it. Soon we can get another train in Abilene. Actually, I'm just going to do it right now. We'll put this on Abilene, New Orleans. Let's run this to Houston, I guess. Have it wait for full cargo. And power. There we go. We got, I don't know, eight, seven, eight trains operating that. And so, let's see. So, the way the game, so, oh lord, the air, oh my lord. No way. How absolutely unlucky. We have an opponent here. I've never had this happen before. What a piece of trash. Okay, so he's going to be draining passengers from Los Angeles, which is going to really mess with our uh, profits going across the nation, uh, coming from Los Angeles to New Orleans. That's extremely unfortunate. Okay, well, 
Just uh, let's roll with the blows, I guess, and uh, see how it goes. Now, I think the game intends you to kind of go down here. Like this path here, and then cut this way into Los Angeles. I think that's the intention, since, you, since it's made this specific way. But, don't be fooled. And also, don't have tracks like, what the hell? Why did it not go away? Don't be fooled. <laughs> you can't go through Yuma here, through this flat area and terrain here. And have a little bit less terrain to deal with. Then you don't have to go all the way up and around and all that sort of stuff. So you, you want to try to keep your gradient uh, to, to at least some degree good. Uh, really though? What the hell is going on? It, it won't go away. What the fuck? Okay, that's weird. Uh, either way, so let's have a look at the terrain here. So let's, uh, let's try to get a good gradient on our track. We could go along the river here and then we should be able to have a good gradient. Uh, I'm gonna have to remove that oil well though. Ah, uh, maybe we didn't have to remove it actually because the gradient's gonna be <laughs> trash anyway. Um, Ah, oh, Lord. Okay, how do I do this? I do want to have decent gradient. Alright, we're gonna just remove this track. So, yeah, I'm not playing optimally in uh, in this mission here, but... Uh, as long as we get the gold in the end, right? That's all that matters. I don't know, maybe... Like this. Maybe kind of cut off here from there, no. Maybe it's gradient issues for sure. Okay, well, well there's just going to be some stuff with the gradient, and that's just... You're just going to have to deal with that. That's whatever. Um, I guess we could place a station here in El Paso. I don't really care that much about connecting it, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, so, okay, we'll just... Uh, there you go, El Paso's connected. Good for El Paso. We're gonna get the uh, sanding tower, water tower, and a roundhouse going. And then... You might not want to do this with a double track, but I want to run a lot of trains back and forth between New Orleans and Los Angeles, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I don't want them to stop each other, uh, reducing the profit of when they actually do reach the destination. Because if we got 10 trains coming each way, there's gonna be a lot of blocking going on, and I just would like to avoid it if possible. So it looks like this would give us a decent gradient tail. Okay, so down to there. Hmm. Okay, so do I want to connect Phoenix or not? Like, it kind of depends a little bit on what kind of gradient I'll be getting. Because there might be some pretty harsh gradient tail, as you can see. Um. I think we just swing for Yuma instead. Never mind uh, Phoenix. I'm, I'm not going to bother too much with connecting up Phoenix and whatnot. Or like, uh, yeah, making profit in the western part of a route here. I would just hope for a little bit better gradient. Ah, but you know what? Uh, one red section here and there. It's not going to be the end of the world for you. Alright, we'll uh, continue in this effort to building west once we have a little bit more money to play around with. So, let's get ourselves that money. And the train about to hit Houston. Can it load up in something good there? Yep, three men, three passenger. Very nice. Uh, we're going to worry about the stock market a little bit later. How you do it is up to you, and uh, no playthrough of this map is necessarily completely identical, so you just have to see how things are going for you and decide for yourself how you want to do it. So our wool train, hmm, we could maybe have two of those. Alright, so we could... The Baldwin Locomotive Company has offered an exclusive contract for the new 280 Consolidation Locomotive. 
If you agree, you'll be the only company allowed to buy the consolidation for, uh, consolidation, well, uh, never mind how poorly I'm saying that, for the next five years. This opportunity comes at a price tag of 100,000. Will you pay? No. No, I won't. Uh, it's a good, uh, train for grades and such. It will handle, uh, hills a lot better than the train that we now have available. But not to such an extent that I actually care, so... Let's see, we have... A little... We have room for maybe one more train on this uh, network here. So let's just get that going. Twelve trains total here should be making a decent amount of profit for us until we can get uh, the cross-country effort going. Joseph McCoy, a livestock trader, has offered you 500,000 to connect Abilene to your railway. He has a large amount of cattle just waiting to get to the market. Uh, well, I'm already transporting it to the market, but I'll take the free half million. Get a move on and you'll make some good money. Yeah, give me the money. We're connected, baby. Alright, we're just gonna mail passenger in New Orleans, pick that up, and... Uh, Slaps me on the back with 500,000. Let's go. Okay, so that is probably going to be enough for us to finish our track to Los Angeles. Now, Yuma, Yuma, Yuma. I'm going to have to take out one of your buildings. Because I want to lay this over here. So, is this optimal? No, far from it. But uh, is it going to be good enough? Maybe. It is. Like, it'll work. I'm not doing this optimally whatsoever, but I'm doing it good enough. It will function, and that's what matters. It will get the job done, but certainly, uh... uh the thing is, I, I would do this differently if I was just playing for myself. Um, I would play around and try to minimize, or like min-max what I can get out of the track, connect everything, connect minor... Uh, industries, etc., and just try to make a squeeze a profit out wherever I can squeeze a profit out, just because that's kind of how I like to play it. But we have a mission to complete, and uh, let's focus on that. So, Tucson, just sanding water roundhouse, just want to make sure there's a few stops where I can get all the stuff that I need, the various trains passing through. Yuma, sanding water tower is probably enough here. Let's not go for another roundhouse there. And then we need to create a station in Los Angeles. Right next to our opponent's station. Ah, it's already actually getting quite a lot of uh, passengers and whatnot. So sanding water roundhouse. And uh, now it's time to start running trains between these two stations. Uh, or between New Orleans and Los Angeles. So we connected in, uh, I don't know, what was the start year? It's connected in a few years. So we got one train in New Orleans now. We can reroute that. To, uh, Los Angeles. It's only got two passenger available in New Orleans at the moment, but that's fine. We can also now start sending trains from Los Angeles to New Orleans. So we'll just go three passengers so it doesn't get slowed down too much on the way. Put them on express, the passenger trains. And, uh, yeah, this looks beautiful right there, as you can see. Oh, th this is our opponent, has laid tracks, sir. Ah, I see. Yeah, he doesn't want to use our tracks, so... He's just kind of crisscrossing across our tracks. It's a bit weird, but... Shouldn't matter too much. We have the right of way, and that's what matters. Oh, in Dallas, uh, I want to stop micromanaging this a little bit, actually. Oh, you know what? No, let's keep micromanaging this. Just so that we make as much profit out of it as we can. Alright, so I'm going to send another train from Los Angeles. Just kind of start getting them going. This should do good, I think. And then we'll get another one going from New Orleans to Los Angeles. This will be the standardized loadout for them, I suppose. YouTube Connect stock is split two for one. Alright. So, investors are ecstatic about the chairman's performance. Board of Director increased salary by 9,000. Economy status prosperity. Um, 
Yeah, we have almost 2 million, so we're a quarter of the way to the personal net wealth. Without really dabbling too much in the stock market yet. Right. United States buys Alaskan territory from Russia. We don't want to clog with too many trains, sir. As you can see, they will struggle a little bit with the uh, gradient. Alright, we're making good money. So how is the... Uh, okay, we should probably get another train on this Abilene uh, thing here. Yeah, the railroad isn't too clogged. Passenger trains have priority, it's all good. Let's get another train going from Los Angeles to New Orleans. And another one from uh, New Orleans to Los Angeles. And put them on express. Alright, I'm making really good money. So we can probably buy back some of our stock before they start splitting even more. There we go. That should do fine. If we have a look now, like we got 30,000 stocks at the moment, or shares. Some of the other guys have been investing in us a little bit, that's unfortunate. And there's 100,000 just owned by random people on the market. So our share prices have steadily been increasing over the time, over the years. One, two, three, four, five years into it now. Okay. So this thing's about to hit New Orleans. And uh, we will then reroute it, and uh, never mind having that going to Houston. Now uh, we're never, we're, ne we're not, I'm just gonna complete this mission with gold, right? You can actually do a lot more and, and have fun and take your time with it, but uh, I want to be a little bit effective with it, so we're just gonna go through it like this. Land Grand Salted, don't care, I think that pertains to uh, track building in some way. It didn't actually pick up the correct uh, cars over here, so we're going to have to turn it back. And that being said, let us also send another train from Los Angeles to New Orleans. Because they are going to be making very good money when they come in. As you can see, uh, 1.7 million on this in value, 2 million on this in value, even more than that actually, 2.3 million. So we just need to be able to stay afloat until they can reach the destination and then we can buy back stock and start funneling all the profits into our own pockets. And it doesn't look like we're really going to struggle staying afloat if I'm honest. We are looking pretty good right now. Just keep producing some train cylinder every now and then. And we can probably increase our game speed a little bit. Investors are highly excited, another increase of salary by 4,000 to 42,000. Our revenues are good, we are definitely by far the most profitable company. And uh, we're gonna get to the wealthiest player status as well, or company owner, or whatever you want to call it. Let's see, track building, mountainous track building, we don't need that anymore. So, let's see... Uh, all of these are pretty trash, actually, but okay, station building 15% cheaper. Let's do that. Because I would like to, uh, get whatever I can here, like, uh, large restaurant, saloon, post office, small hotel, anything that increases passenger and mail revenue in New Orleans and Los Angeles. Because that will increase our profits when these trains reach the destination, and we're gonna be making... Some serious money. Uh, let's just, uh, ah, we have a new train available. Which, uh, let's have a quick look at. It is better than the one we already have, by quite a bit. But uh, let's not replace the trains we already have, we'll just get some new trains. With the new train. And start sending them across as well. From east to west. we go, express on all of these passenger trains. Okay, we're gonna have to replace one of these trains to got uh, wrecked there, train 16, I believe that's a, uh, whatever, we'll just, there we go, that's been replaced. Uh, stay class railroads of wrongdoing, okay, good for the stay, good for the railroads. 
So yeah, I mean, uh, it's kind of clogging up a little bit here, uh, but it's not too bad. Just apparently Houston is a popular place to be. Right, so let's increase the speed again. Maybe get another train going from New Orleans to Los Angeles. Oh, wait a minute, am I even actually sending her to the correct Los Angeles? Oh lord, I have to look through my trains where they're going. Los Angeles Junction? No, 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 no. Oh no, yeah, 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 Los Angeles Junction, right. God damn it. Honestly, screw this, uh, computer guy. This computer control player. We own the junction, he owns the, um... Actual Los Angeles. God damn it. That's just annoying. Uh, something I should have thought about earlier, but okay, there we go. We, we fixed it. The problem is fine. It's fine. It's, it's not a problem. Okay, the neutral economy status is booming. I hope that keeps going until we actually get... Uh, Get the cost nation with our trains, so that we can make massive profit. Uh, yeah, we did not have good profits this year, that's for sure. So our uh, salary was cut, and our stock prices, our stock value dropped by a tremendous amount. That being said, let's maybe just buy 5,000 stocks. We'll be making money. Just, we're not micromanaging these passenger trains anymore. We're not having, like, local passenger traffic that's generating money for us. So that's, yeah, a little bit of an economical setback due to that. Uh, but it's whatever, long term, it should be fine. Yeah, we'll just do this. Hopefully we keep making good profit anyway, just off the cattle. So... Ah, yes, the thing is, uh, if we bought this, right, because we've pumped so much into this right now, so it's very lucrative. This will, this can make, you can easily make over 100,000 per year from owning these, but it's just not the focus for me in this specific uh, scenario. That's all I want to do is get the gold medal, and uh, it's whatever. This could give us a little bit more profit, but as you can see, the computer has purchased it, since we are making it so profitable to own it. So that's profits we're missing out on, but, uh, oh well. What are you gonna do? Alright. So, yeah, more trains from New Orleans to Los Angeles. And hopefully at some point soon these will start reaching a destination. It might take another year or two more. Ah, uh, this one's getting pretty close. Investors are very pleased. That's good. We upped the profits a little bit. But it seems to have been a general downturn in uh, in the stock market if we look at the uh, net wealth of all players. So. That being said, let us see. Uh, it's just not really that usual useful managers I've been I'm being given her. That's just how it is sometimes. The bloom is off the economic boom just before my first train starts arriving. Because, of course, why not? Well, but that's just how it is. Just gotta deal with it, and it should be fine anyway. We're definitely gonna make profits, and then we're gonna start buying our company back. From the stock market. Ah, oh, no, train 15 got robbed. Oh, lord, that is unfortunate. But yeah, we're making good profit though, so if we just uh, buy back stock, so that we are the only ones actually having stock in our own company, at some point, and all the dividend will go to us, that would be pretty nice. Economy cooling, well, it is what it is. We will be hitting home soon with all these uh, passenger trains. We're gonna put more of them in operation, send them across the nation, and make profit. There we go, okay. Let's see her. Highly excited about the chairman's performance, that's good. 
Uh, yeah, revenue is uh, now in the top, so that's good. We're still, uh, well, we're kind of we're recovering on the stock prices at least, so that's good as well. We're just going to buy some more stock here, so it's not all in the free market. This train looks like it's going to be making us serious money when it reaches the station right there, let's see. Oh yes, it's close. 1.4 million when it hits. In fact, let's. Uh, that means these trains are going to start coming in. Let's go 45,000. Hope I don't burn myself actually doing that. I have done in the past. Yeah. Okay. Now nah, I think I think we'll be fine actually. Let's um, buy even more, and then start buying back stock. Before it splits again. Purchasing power 4 million. Total net worth 10 million. So we're 2 million over the uh, what's required right now. It's good. So as long as we just get a few of these uh, car loads. Yeah, YouTube Connect stock is split 5 for 1. I did not want that to happen before we bought a lot of stocks and, uh, you know, bought back a lot of stocks. Investors are ecstatic about the chairman's performance. The board of directors increases your salary by 22,000 to 63,000. Have a couple of new uh, managers available, and we made 8.8 .8 million profit that year, so we are skyrocketing away from our competition right now. A net worth of 12 million, so we just... Oh, no, we did it! We did it! It's a go. I don't know how many years we did that then. Uh, we had maybe six more years to do it, so we did it in 10 years, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, there you have it. That's one way you can do it. There are many strategies to doing it. This is how I decided to do it. We didn't even have to, dip, uh, to dabble with the dividend and uh, paying out anything to ourselves, actually, because the shares that we did own just ended up being worth so damn much. So, that's one way to do it, uh, as I said. Just maybe get a little bit of shares going in the early game and start building up slowly, safely, and surely. And then... When you start making some serious cash, when you make the east to west connection and the train start coming in, buy back stocks on the market, so that your shares are worth so much more. It worked for me, it can work for you. Either way, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did uh, like the video, I would appreciate if you would consider leaving maybe a like on it, and uh, or even maybe subscribing to my channel. Either way, you can catch me in the next one. Have a good one.